Aren't you glad today for music that glorifies the Lord? Thank you, praise team, and uh, just thank you so much for uh, making what I've got to do this morning easier, you know, uh, easier, because you've just uh, so wonderfully set the table here this morning, as we say in the preacher world, you set the table. Amen. Uh, Matthew 17 this morning is the text that I'm going to use, and um, first of all, let me say, while you're turning there, that I just thank God for your pastor, Dr. Robert Williams, and his dear wife, Teresa. I've only known them for 35 years, so, <laughs> so I'm just getting to know them, you know. I remember uh, uh, we were in Jacksonville, Florida together a long time ago, and just uh, thank God that uh, uh, we're in the same area again and for many years, and I just uh, just am so grateful for them and, and the path, the path, the path. We are going this morning up on a mountain. We're going up on a mountain with Jesus, Peter, James, and John. So let's look at this text this morning. And we're going to do a little mountain climbing. So you got a, you got your backpack on and your, your, your shoes on. You're, you're ready to go up on a mountain. All right, and we're going to see something here on this mountain that no one on earth had ever seen before till this time. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up unto a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. His face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. That's a kind way of saying, Peter, shut up. There's one person here that needs to talk. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Would you say that with me? Save Jesus only. One more time. Save Jesus only. On this mountain, we find that Jesus had taken his disciples, and there he gave them a glimpse, gave them a glimpse of what he would be in heaven. Now, if he had given them a total glimpse, they wouldn't be alive to tell about it. But here on this mountain, in the midst of his ministry, you see, we... We saw Jesus as a baby, didn't we, in the incarnation. We saw Jesus as a boy teaching in the temple. We saw Jesus being baptized, baptized. We saw Jesus, later on we'd see him on the cross, the crucifixion. And then we would later see him at the ascension. And thank God one day we're going to see him in the revelation. He's coming again. But here in the midst of all that, of his earthly ministry, we see Jesus transfigured. We see Jesus transfigured. 
And there appeared to them on that mountain two men from the Old Testament, the lawgiver Moses and the prophet Elijah. A heavenly visitation, if you will. A heavenly visitation. Now, Moses and Elijah had been on the mountain with God before. They knew what it meant to be on the mountain with God. Moses received the commandments from God on the mountain, didn't he? Elijah prayed on the mountain, and God answered by fire. Here on this mountain, the physician Luke tells us with regard to his story about this, his narrative, that they were talking about Jesus' exodus. He uses the word exodus. Because you see, Jesus wasn't going to stay on this mountain. Jesus had a divine appointment, a divine destiny, if you will. He was going from this mountain down the valley, but not long from this time he would be carried up to another mountain on a cross. And there he would give his life (coughs) for you and for me. But into that moment of the heavenly visitation and the Lord's transfiguration speaks Peter. Peter. And he says, Lord, this is a great place to just stay. A great place to stay. And so let's just build three booths or three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Why don't you three just stay here? Now, Peter, I love Peter because Peter reminds me of me. Peter reminds me of me. He's, you know, uh, Samuel said, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Peter's motto was, Listen, Lord, thy servant speaketh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Peter had a way with words, and not so good a way. But you know, it kind of reminds us of ourselves. I want you just to turn back one chapter here. Let's, let's kind of work our way up to what Peter had to say here. In chapter 16, in verse 13, it says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked his disciples, Whom do men say the Son of Man is? And they said, Why, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Some say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Now that's the great question of the day, isn't it? Who do you say Jesus is? And Simon said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What a statement. And verse 17, Jesus says, Simon, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. You see, you see, Peter at that moment got it. He got it. And he spoke by the Spirit of God and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, he got it at that moment, but let's just go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. And in verse 21 of that same chapter, it says, From that time forth began Jesus to show to his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me. What? Satan. Isn't it interesting that out of the same mouth came a spiritual statement? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And out of the same mouth came out a satanic statement, I'm not going to let this happen to you, Lord. 
In other words, if Peter had gotten his way, Jesus would have never made it to the cross. Now, on this mountain here, Peter, what he says is not attributed to Satan nor to the Spirit. I think it's just self. Sometimes what we do and what we say cannot be attributed to the devil, can it? We've just got the old flesh, don't we? All we can blame is ourselves. Have you ever been in a place where you, I know, I know most of you would never do this, but I've been in a place where I have said something, and all of a sudden you see people looking at you, and you, it's, like, it's like you had an out-of-body experience. You said that and said, why did I say that? Who is this? And then you try to work your way out of it, and it just gets worse. Anybody ever been there? I don't, I don't know. That, that's a real funny feeling, isn't it? I think that's where G Peter was here on this mountain. He, he meant well, but, but that, this is just not going to work here. You see, once again, he would get in the way of Jesus going to the cross. If Jesus had stayed on this mountain, why, you and I wouldn't be saved today. And so... And so here we are, we find ourselves sometimes meaning well. I believe he meant well. But that wasn't God's will, was it? So here we are on this mountain. And uh, in the midst of all that, in the midst of all this going on, Peter speaks. And the Lord... Father from heaven speaks from heaven and says, This is my beloved Son, hear ye him. You know, I think the Lord gave us one mouth and two ears for a purpose, don't you? We need to listen more than we speak sometimes, don't we? Yeah. I think that's what the Lord was telling Peter. Peter, Peter, this is not about you. This is about him. Sing that song, Jesus, you're the center. What an appropriate song. Jesus, you're the center. You're, you, you're it. As long as we follow Jesus, as long as we listen to Jesus, we're okay. It's when we begin to get out of bounds, we begin to listen to the devil, or we begin to listen to the flesh that we get in trouble. And so God reminds Peter, Peter, this is my beloved son here ye him. Listen to him. Listen to Jesus. And Jesus touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. Aren't you glad for the God, Jesus, the God of the second chance? Amen. Aren't you glad for the God of the third chance and the fourth chance and the fifth chance? God does not give up on us. Thank God. Uh, some of you may not, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, hey, we're, we're, we're there. We know what we're talking about, don't we? Don't we? If it hadn't been for God, if it hadn't been for God, there is no telling where I'd be today. No telling, no telling. Uh, my last name is Flanagan. That's Irish, isn't it? Just about as Irish as you can get. And uh, I didn't grow up in a Christian home early on. Everything you think about Irish people, we did. Okay? All right? I mean, uh, uh, it wasn't till later on in life that we darkened the door of a church. All right? But, you know, uh, I remember a Christian family. They came to us uh, one Sunday. They invited us over for Sunday dinner for eat Sunday dinner. Now, we did not know that that was a plot. They invited us over to Sunday dinner, and it started getting late, and they said, why don't you come to church with us? A setup, that's right. It was a setup. And I remember my dad to this day. I was a young man, but I remember him giving one excuse after the other. We're not dressed right. We're not this right, whatever. But for whatever reason, we went with them. All right, 
And it wasn't long till my father was saved, my mother was saved, I was saved, my brother was saved. Uh, my grandparents lived uh, another state away, and they heard what happened to us, and they went to a Bible-preaching church, and they were saved. So I'm telling you, without the saving grace of Jesus Christ, there is no telling where my clan of Flanagan's would be today. Well, I'll tell you where they would be. I know where they would be. And you probably have a testimony, too, this morning, if you know the Lord Jesus or where you would be without Jesus. I'm so glad he didn't give up on us. I'm glad Christian people didn't give up on us. They kept working their way until finally, like you say, they set us up and got us to church and got us under the word. And God saved us. And I'm here today because of that setup and because of the grace of God. Amen. Amen. And he says here, And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Save Jesus only. Now we got communion here today. And we're going to remember Jesus again. His death, his burial, his resurrection. And if you're here without Christ today, I can tell you this. He saved an old Irishman. He can save you. No matter what you've done this morning, Jesus is in the saving business. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you this morning for saving us, for keeping us, for not giving up on us. Even after we're Christians, Lord, we're not perfect, but you keep you keep, keep on after us. Thank you. Thank you this morning. And now as we take partake of the bread and the juice this morning, we want to remember what Jesus did for us, how he gave his life for us. And, Lord, we are in turn to live for him. For it's in the lovely name of Jesus we do commit afresh our love, and our lives to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to take just a few minutes and tell you how to become a child of God. The Bible teaches us several facts about our natural state and how to change that with the spiritual rebirth. It begins in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 10, where Paul says, There's none righteous, no, not one. That means me, that means you. That means the most innocent, cutest, sweetest baby that has just been born. None is righteous. No, not one. And the reason for that, uh, Paul says, is because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means that uh, because of our sin nature, because of that which was passed down from Adam to us, we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Paul goes on to say that God loved us anyway, and he proved it by sending Jesus to die before we ever repented, before we ever confessed, before we were ever born, and before we committed the very first sin. But because of that sin nature, God loved us, and he demonstrated it by sending Jesus to die on the cross. The next thing that Paul tells us is that each of us must make a decision. We must choose uh, the gift of God, which is eternal life, or we will receive the wages of sin, which is eternal damnation. It is a, it is a moral, spiritual, conscious decision that every person must make if they are to receive the gift of God, which is eternal life. Paul says we can have this gift applied to our lives by simply confessing with our mouths and believing in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead for the purpose of raising you and I from our sins. If you believe that God died for you and is capable of paying the penalty for your sin debt, 
I encourage you to bow now and pray with me this simple prayer. This is between you and God, and as you pray, God will answer. Father, thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Be Lord, be Savior, be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Take control now. Thank you in Jesus' name for saving my soul. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, believe it in your heart. God has answered it. And no matter what happens between now and the time that you leave this earth, you are a child of God. God bless you. Hi, I'm Robert Williams, the teaching elder at the Path Worship Center. These digital broadcasts are our attempt to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're on our t YouTube channel or Facebook page, you have access to additional contact and soon additional content that may be helpful to your spiritual growth. It is our desire that we present the Word of God so that anyone looking for Jesus can find Him and grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We hope you enjoy this teaching. We hope that God will speak to you through it. God bless you.